Hello and welcome to the third video of the FP2 chapter Further Argand Diagrams. In this video I'm just going to go through the remaining examples in the textbook for these two sections. There are quite a few so I've put them all in this video together and all of these examples are to do with these five standard results that we've looked at for loci on an Argand diagram. So keep all of these in your mind because these are the very things that we are practicing here. First example, given that Z satisfies this sketch the locus of Z on an Argand diagram. So we need to be able to recognize the form. The form here is one that gives a circle because this is saying that the distance from 4 to Z is a constant 5 units. So if we have 4 on our real axis here and the distance to Z is 5 units, so on the real axis 5 units away I have a minus 1 here, and 5 units away is a 9 here. So the 5 is telling us the radius of this circle. So it looks something like this, where this is a 5, and this is a minus 5. Part B, we have to find the values of Z that satisfy both this statement, so it needs to be on this locus somewhere, and the imaginary part of Z equals 0. Well, we've kind of done that as part of our sketch. The imaginary part of z equals 0 means it's on the real axis, and I found minus 1 and 9. So for part b, z equals minus 1, or z equals 9. Part c is very similar. Find the values of z that satisfy both this, so it's on the locus again, and the real part of z equals 0, so where it crosses the imaginary axis. Not quite so straightforward. It's here and here. This is where our problem solving comes in, because we know that the radius of the circle is 5. So I know this distance is 5, and of course from 0 to 4 is 4 units. So that tells me that this side here, as a Pythagorean triple, is 5 squared minus 4 squared square rooted 3. And the symmetry, because we've got the diameter of the circle on the real axis, tells me that the other one must be minus 3. And of course these are on the imaginary axis, so that means z is equal to 3i, or z is equal to minus 3i. Second example, a complex number z is represented by the point p on an Argand diagram. Given that this is true, sketch the locus of p. Don't worry too much about the fact that there's a p in here. They could just as easily have said, find the locus of z, it's just very formal language. So sketch the locus of P using this. This is the same standard locus. We've got the modulus of Z minus a complex number here, 5 plus 3i, and the distance between them has to equal 3. So we've got 5 and 3i. So the center of the circle is here and the radius of the circle is 3 units. Now be aware here of how that interacts with your axes. The center is 3 units above the real axis and the radius is 3, so the circle should just touch the real axis here. It's 5 units away from the imaginary axis with a radius of 3, so it will come down to a 2 here. A radius of 3 above would we'll bring it up to a 6. Radius of 3 over here somewhere. My diagram were better. Would be an 8. And then it comes down here. So although we don't need to draw it accurately, it is worthwhile having a think about how it would look on the diagram and getting all the key parts. Part B. Find the Cartesian equation of the locus. We could, as always, use the standard method of putting in x plus yi here, collecting real and imaginary parts, getting rid of the modular symbol, and then rearranging it. But because this is a circle, we know the center, we know the radius, you should just be able to write this down. We've got x minus 5 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals the radius squared. Part C again here is the problem solving question. Find the maximum value of arg z in the interval minus pi to pi. So all of the different possible z values are here in the locus. We want the one with the maximum argument of z, i.e. the biggest angle 
measured from the positive real axis. Well, we can see straight away that there's nothing below the real axis, so this minus pi is pretty much redundant. It could have said 0 to pi, because we're going to be above the real axis. If I take this point, for example, it has a fairly small angle. If I take this point, it has a bigger angle. If I take this point, it's about the same. This point is fairly small again. The biggest one is going to be over here somewhere. So if I put that on, the tangent to the circle over here, this z will have the biggest argument. And the question is, how do we find that? Because we don't know what z is to make this argument the biggest. Nor do we need to, we just need to know the actual angle itself. If you want to puzzle this out for yourself, pause the video now. The way we're going to do this is taking the line to the centre, making use of the symmetry and the right angles involved when you take the radius here. So I'm using this kite shape here, splitting it in half, so that I've got a right angle triangle down here, a right angle triangle up here, and I can calculate this angle quite easily because I know the radius here is 3, and I know from the centre to this point is 5 units. So if I call that theta for a moment, the tan of theta is equal to 3 over 5. And then my green angle alpha, the one I actually want, is equal to 2 times theta because of the symmetry. The only thing left to do then is to put it all on my calculator. This in radians is 0 0.540, and if we times that by 2, rounding to three significant figures, gives us 1.08 radians. Third example, same again, we've got another circle here. Given that the complex number this satisfies the equation this, find the maximum and minimum values of the modulus of z. Okay, we're all about the Argand diagram here, so let me make this quite big. Our centre point is 12 plus 5i here. And again, we have a radius of 3, so it will come down to 2 here, it'll go up to 8 here, it will come down to 9 here, and go up to 15 over here. It's not really very accurate, but it gives me an idea of what's going on. Something like this. But how can I find the maximum and minimum value of the modulus of z? Well, let's think about where they are, first of all. From here... The smallest distance to the circle touches here, so that's about there. From here, if I go this way, that's a bit further away. Over here is a bit further again, and if you go all the way around, you find that the furthest distance is over here, on the exact opposite side of the center point from the closest. And we're going to use that in our problem solving. So from here to here is the closest, and then continuing on through the centre to there is the furthest. Realising that is the key point, because if I know the distance to the centre point, which we can calculate because we know where that is, we just need to subtract the radius to get the shortest distance, and add the radius to get the longest distance. So using Pythagoras, 12 squared plus 5 squared, square rooted, gives the centre point a modulus of 13 units. So the minimum value of z is just 13 minus 3, which is 10. And the maximum value of z, 13 plus 3, is 16. So with a well-drawn diagram, and the understanding that this is the closest point, and directly opposite it is the furthest point, the calculation itself was really quite easy. Next example, moving away from the circles. Here we've got the argument of this is equal to 3 pi by 4. Sketch the locus of z. So if I set up my argand diagram, and I focused on this quadrant because I know that the complex number involved here, when you put the minus in to make it match one of the standard results, is minus 3 minus 2i. So we're at minus 3 minus 2i, somewhere down here. But I need to draw this with an open circle, because this standard result is a half line, and the half line does not include the point itself. Now I consider the angle, 3 pi by 4, I hope you recognise this as one of your angles that you know, 
this is 0, pi by 4, pi by 2, 3 pi by 4. So it goes off at a 45 degree angle to the negative real axis over here somewhere. Now that's really useful to recognize that this is a 45 degree angle because find the Cartesian equation of the locus where normally you would put in x plus y i here and have a fairly lengthy process to figure it out. You could just recognize what this is. A 45 degree angle down like this is a negative one gradient. This is a y equals minus x graph. And if that's the case, as we continue from minus three, minus two, if we go across another three units on the real axis, we go down another three units on the imaginary axis, and it must cross at minus five. So without doing any algebra, I can write down the equation must be this. Let me stress, however, if you didn't follow that, or you maybe wouldn't see that in an exam situation, going through the process would give you exactly the same answer. Let me stress as well that this is not quite finished. This is a full line. We need a half line. So we need to state that x must be less than minus 3. And again, because this point is not included, this needs to be a strict inequality. This is the final answer for part b. Part c. Find the complex number z that satisfies both this and this. So it's the same point minus 3 minus 2i. And this is a circle of radius 10. So the scale on my diagram is now no longer even close to accurate. This circle here has a radius of 10. So here is more problem solving techniques. What you could do is a lot of algebra. You can work out the equation of this circle very easily because you know the center point and the radius. And then you can substitute this equation in to the circle equation. Make sure you don't include the point down here only the point up here, and that would be your answer. Or you can realize that if you know the radius of this, and you know again that this is a 45 degree angle, then you can make an isosceles triangle, where you know that this is the same distance as this, and this is 10 units from the radius. So a squared plus a squared must equal 10 squared, 2a squared equals 100, a squared equals 50, a must equal 2 root 5. Now we haven't quite finished because we need the point, not just the distance away from this point. So to get this point here from 0 minus 3 minus another 2 root 5 gives me minus 3 minus 2 root 5 for the real part. And then the imaginary part is minus 2 plus 2 root 5, which I will write as 2 root 5 minus 2 in brackets, i. This then is the solution to part c. So you could do this whole question with a lot of algebra, and it would be fine. You would get the right answer so long as you were careful with your algebra. But often with questions like this, there are little problem solving ways to get around a lot of the algebra. Next example. Given that this argument is equal to this, sketch the locus of z. Okay, recognizing what this form is, it is an arc that goes from this point to this point anti-clockwise, giving an angle pi by 4, which is smaller than pi by 2, so it will be the major arc. So let's get this drawn on an argand diagram. We're going from 6 on the real axis, but remember this should be an open circle to 2 on the real axis, another open circle, and we need to go anti-clockwise, so either a minor arc or a major arc, but the minor arc would give you an angle greater than pi by 2, and this is pi by 4, so it must be a major arc, if you'll forgive my bad drawing of circles. Part b, find the Cartesian equation of the locus. Now again, we could do this using all of the algebra that we've discussed in the previous video, and that would work, that's fine. But because I did an example of that in the previous video, we'll investigate a different way to do this one. And you can't always do it a different way. Sometimes you've just got to do the algebra. But if it's a nice question, there might be another way to do it. In this case, we can abuse the fact that we're on the real axis with both of these points. And we know that the center point must be halfway. So there's some symmetry here. So the center point is here. I don't know how far up that is from the real axis. 
but I know that the x-coordinate must be 4. Now solving this question without algebra involves quite a few different things. First of all, we've used a bit of symmetry there. Now we're going to use a circle theorem. So we know the angle made from 2 onto the circumference and down to 6. We know that's pi by 4. And one of your circle theorems says that if you go from the circumference to the centre, the angle at the centre from the same two points will be twice the angle at the circumference. So this must be pi by 2. And pi by 2, despite how my drawing has come out, gives us a right angle here. That's great for two quick reasons. Firstly, it gives us a right angle triangle here. And secondly, we also know that this triangle is isosceles, because from here to this point is a radius, and from here to this point is a radius. Now, we don't know what that radius is just yet, but we're about to find out. Because being an isosceles triangle with a right angle here means that these two angles both must be pi by 4 again, 45 degrees. And now if I focus in on one of those, cut this in half, I've got a really nice easy triangle here. And again, my diagram hasn't worked out very well. But cutting this in half means this must be pi by 4 as well, because there's another right angle here, which means we have another isosceles triangle. And whatever distance this is, which we know to be 2, must be the same as this distance, which in turn tells us that the radius squared must be 2 squared plus 2 squared. So it must be 2 root 2. In the process of doing that, of course, we've also found the coordinates of the center point because we can see it's two units off the real axis, which puts this at 4, 2. Now I have all the information I need to write the circle equation. x minus 4 squared plus y minus 2 squared must equal the radius squared, which is 8. Of course, because we only want part of this circle, we do need to be careful to limit this. In this case, the y coordinate must be greater than 0. Now, there were plenty of points in that example where you might have thought to yourself, oh, I would not have realized that's what you needed to do, because it was drawing on a few different things. But don't panic. If you just prefer to smash the algebra, you will get the same answer. So if you went through the algebraic process with this, I think it would be longer. And you've got to be careful, as always, with lengthy algebra, not to make any silly mistakes. But if you go through the algebra and you do it all accurately, you will get this same answer. If that's the way you prefer to do it, go for it. Final example is another arc. Given that the argument of this is pi by 2, now immediately you should realize that's a 90 degree angle. That's important. Sketch the locus of z. This question is a little bit unusual in that we don't appear to have a z1. z minus z1 here is just z. But remember, of course, z1 can be 0. So this is like saying z minus 0. So z1 is here. And z2 is 4i here. Now, to help us draw this, we should remember that a 90 degree angle in an arc always comes from the diameter. So from 0 to 4, this is the diameter of our circle. And we need to go anti-clockwise from z1 to z2. So it starts here and goes here, like so. And of course, we immediately know that the center point of the circle then must be at 2i. That also helps us with part b, write down the range of possible values of the real part of z, because we know here to here and here to here, the radius is obviously 2. So from here to here, the greatest value of the real part of z must also be a 2. So it's very easy to write this, which is not quite accurate. Why not? Because the open circle here is not included in the locus. So what it should be is a strict inequality here. So the real part of z must be greater than 0, but it can be anything up to and including 2. This is the correct answer. And that's the end of our examples. 
there were quite a few there and none of them involved the lengthy algebra process that we were doing in the previous videos but most of them could have done and would have given you the same answer now if you haven't done so already you can have a go at all the questions from exercise 4a and 4b and in the next video we will look at regions on an argand diagram maybe i'll see you there